Hi, what's going on everybody? Adam here with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Swagman XC2 platform style bike rack on our 2016 Buick Regal. So, if you're looking for a rather inexpensive way to get two bikes to and from your destination, well you found it. This one's really going to give you a lot of different options when it comes to what bikes we can put it on and of course what kind of hitches we can put them in. So, Right off the bat, if you're looking for a bike rack that's gonna allow you to tilt it with the bikes installed or just tilt in general, this one isn't for you. We have no tilting feature with this bike rack, which it's just, like I said, kind of the bare bones kind of bike rack you can have. It doesn't have a lock for the hitch and it doesn't have a lock for your bikes, but it's just gonna get your bikes to and fro. So one thing that I like about this bike rack is the fact that down here at the cradles, we're gonna be able to adjust these. So if you got a kiddo, usually their bikes are a lot smaller than yours. So with this, we can go ahead and adjust it throughout the whole entire mast of the bike rack. So we can either accommodate for the smaller bikes that we may be putting on, or what we can do is we can offset the bike. So if you like to have them both facing this way and the handlebars are maybe kind of conflicting a little bit. You can have some of the cradles slid this way, some of them slid this way to kind of offset that. So a lot of adjustability. So you will be able to fit a wide array of bikes on here. If you have a carbon fiber bike, I don't suggest this bike rack just because it has a frame hook. Eventually, after you start really tugging down on these things, you might start to crack that carbon fiber. That's all up to you though. But these are coated, so if you do use it with your carbon fiber or any other bikes, they're not gonna get scratched, which is always a plus. So, one thing that is kind of limiting with this bike rack is you can't put fat tire bikes on here, and it is gonna be 35 pounds per bike. So it's probably not gonna be your e-bike rack, and it's not gonna be your fat tire rack, rack because this is only gonna allow a tire width of three and a half inches which is a lot, so it's gonna be great for your road bikes, your kid bikes, and of course your mountain bikes, so they usually don't get that thick. But let's just go ahead and take the bike off the rack so we can get a closer look. So we are gonna have these frame hooks here, which they come off, which is kinda of nice, and you can get a closer look at the mechanism that allows us to do that. So I usually just take them completely off, and then what I do is hold a, put a hand on my bike, take this off and then we can go ahead and take the bike off the rack. So now that we got a closer look at the bike rack, let's go ahead and condense it down a little bit. So you can either put these in your trunk if you want and we are still gonna be able to access the trunk when our bikes are off. So you don't really have to worry about losing that. But what we wanna do put the long one on first and we want to make sure we put it on the right way so there's going to be notches in on these two sides you can kind of see them right there so we want this mechanism to be on one of those sides so you hear the clicking noise oh yeah so we can do that for both of them and then there's going to be a little pin down here all you got to do is just pull it real hard and it comes out, but it is connected, which is nice because I lose everything. So what we can do is we can lean it either way. We wanna make sure these aren't too low. But now we can replace this pin in this hole here and we are good to go. So if you have a backup camera, which this Buick does not, but if you did have one, by putting this down, it's gonna allow you to see back. You will be able to see the bike rack, but that's not big of a deal. One thing that is nice whenever you buy a bike rack is the option to put it on two different types of hitches. We have an inch and a quarter hitch here, and there was a sleeve on there before, but we took that sleeve off so it could fit this one, but it can also fit a two inch hitch receiver as well. So that's always nice. And it isn't a straight shank, so you are gonna get a little bit of ground clearance. It's about four inches of shank rise. So from the center of the hitch pin hole of our hitch on the Regal to the farthest most point, which is gonna be the cradle. It's gonna be about 22 and a half inches and that's gonna be fixed. So we can't really do anything about that. And then at that point, about the 20 inch point, we're gonna have about 13 inches of clearance. 
I don't think that's going to be too low, so I don't think we're going to bottom out if you have a really aggressive driveway or something like that. But it's always just smart to be mindful of how much length you add to the back and, of course, how much height you are off of the ground. Other than that, it comes with a anti-rattle bolt, which completely eliminates the rattle. I'm shaking the car, and the bike rack isn't really moving at all on the inside of there. So again, this is the Swagman XC2, and I think it's gonna be the best basic bike rack that you can get. You don't need all the bells and whistles, you just need your bikes to go to and fro. This is probably gonna be your best bet. Again, I'm Adam with E-Trailer. This was the Swagman XC2, and it was on a 2016 Buick Regal. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is gonna show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.